Dale's given up work as well, so he's boxing yeah. full time now. People don't actually understand that you know a lot of boxers have to have day jobs as well. Oh, that kid's done it the hard way, you know. And um, I think he thought that he was never going to get there. He was boxing on little bills, selling selling forty tickets. He couldn't really sell his ticket application because he lived so far away. Um, so I put my neck on the line. I got him on in Tyler's town. I think I paid him out of my own pocket. He got a um, first round victory. Looked really good. I took him to the match room there and asked them, begged and pleaded for them to put him on a bill, and they did. Uh, beat Kevin McCauley, not particularly impressive, but Kevin McCauley doesn't get stopped very often, he's just covered up. But from that victory, then I got him in prize fighter, and then got him on another match room bill, and then another match room bill, and you know, luckily enough, luckily enough, he's there now. You know, he's just, you know, his, his future's in his own hands. Whereas with a lot of these guys who live in the middle of nowhere, this, their future is all, all about, you know, um, they're trying to get on bills and they can't get on bills because they, they can't sell their ticket application. Nobody's going to use them as an opponent because they're danger men. So a lot of the time, some of these prospects, we could have potential sort of Joe Calzaghe's or Ricky Hatton's or, or Lee Selby's out there, but nobody gets to know because they're just in that unfortunate area or in that unfortunate situation where they're a danger man, so they're not going to be used as an opponent or they cannot sell a ticket application. So, allocation. So, it's, there's a lot of them out there like that. Where do you, like, how much of an improvement do you expect from Dale now? Now that he can concentrate full time on boxing. Yeah, don't, don't, you know, don't forget he still does live in Camargo. But I've had him stay with me. Um, I've had him stay with me this week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and um, he stayed um, last night as well, and then shot up this morning. So um, you know that that might help him a little bit. Mrs. Logan was down in down in Swansea with my kids anyway, so um, I had them staying at my house. And um, you can see he's a different person when he's training every day. And you know, don't forget, I'm, I'm a coach. You learn certain things off me, but you learn a lot more off the boys that we got in the gym. You know, every one of them learn off each other. Um, you know, and and that's the good thing. Being around pros, I think you learn, and you can always see when Dale's been around the pros and, and, and learning and, and on the pads regular, you can see the improvement straight away. So um, I think it'll make a big difference. And he's got the right attitude, he's very de very dedicated <coughs> and willing to work hard as well. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, um, obviously after this fight, should he come through this fight safely, I'm looking forward to, uh, to see him, you know, what we can do with him next. Maxi Hughes as well, you've had a few fights getting to know Maxi in the gym and everything yeah. now and he's got you know, he's got a bit of a name in his next fight, Joseph Leera, former yeah. world title challenger. Yeah, you know, um, his manager, um, Dave Colwell, uh, approached me, you know, Max, he fancied a change um, after losing to Scott Carl, he fancied a change. And he'd been down here sparring with Gavin and he, and he liked he liked the set and he liked the way that I worked with the boys. So Dave approached me and, um, and said that he was willing to sort of relocate. His dad lives in Clenetley anyway, um, even though he's from Doncaster. Um, so I said, well, you know, I got a lot of respect because I did that when I turned pro. I, I moved away to Liverpool, and I, you know, I used to go around the gyms in Liverpool and Manchester on my own sparring. It takes some, makes you grow up, and it takes a lot to do. So anybody relocated like that, I got a lot of respect for. So I said, yeah, I'll train the kid. Um, turns out that he's better than I thought he was, um, and um, he's got a good fight now against Joseph Lyon, um, the kid that lost to Ricky Burns in the WBO title fight. I think he's seen better days, Laya, but as I say, he's, he's a good name. It's a good fight for Max. He's, he's 10 rounds for the International Masters, KFC, McDonald's back, I think. I don't know what it is, but no. No, in, in all seriousness, it, it, it's a 10 rounder against a good opponent. And, um, you know, should he come through it, I think he's, he's right up there in, you know, in, the, in the top. In the top six super featherweights in the country. Yeah, domestically, he's, you know, he's waiting to break through now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, and um, as I say, he's, he's a good kid. He's not going to look good against Journeyman. He's got that type of style. He doesn't really look great against Journeyman. But when he put him in with um, when he put him in with good fighters, he looks good. He did a lot of sparring with Lee Selby for for Lee's fight with Randall Munro because they needed a southpaw, so they came down here. They, they did a load of sparring, and um, you know, and Selby said, "Yeah, it's really good sparring." You know, some some really good sparring that I've had for this fight. So. Um, yeah, he does, he does good against the better fighters. The, I, the only other fighter I can think of under your box, Jay Harris. Is there, is there anyone yeah. else after Jay? Jay Harris. Um, 
I can't think myself now. <laughs> yeah, um, but you had Jay Harris fighting the other week in uh, Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, mm. you know, um, Jay signed to, um, to Frank Warren as well. Um, couldn't really do a lot with him back here. Um, Swansea boy struggled to sell 40, 50 tickets on a Newport bill. Couldn't really do a lot, so I approached Andy Allen and Andy said, yeah, no problems. He said, if you, think, if you think he's a good kid, I'll sign him, no problem. So they they put their money where their mouth is, and they've they've signed him. Um, he was on the uh, he was on the world title build up in Newcastle, uh, going back. It was the week before Enzo, and uh, boxed a good kid. Um, and I think first round, I think he took his time to get into it, but then um, started beating, beating, chipping away, and beating the kid up. Then and he won 39-37. Looked really good. And, um, Jason McClory, the matchmaker, was impressed by him and looking forward to working with him again. So we've just got to keep him busy now. You know, it's, it's important that he's not out of the ring three or four months twiddling his thumb, thumbs. Over. So uh, you know, I should be getting a date for him now in the coming week. And uh, he's got something to work, work towards then. He's had two fights now. Is it difficult with, I think Jay's a super flyweight, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is it difficult with that weight because there's not a lot of you know, other boxers around with that weight so you can get fast trapped? Yeah, before you time. fast track, but I think it's important just not to not to take title fights just because they come up. You know, I think it's important to take to take title fights when you know your your guys in in a good position to win the fights. You know, um, and you know, I, I'd like to see Jay have about I say eight. That sounds that doesn't sound a lot, but as you just said, with the super flyweights, there's not really a lot of uh, uh, guys in the weight division. So. You know, you get guys sometimes having title fights after like four or five fights, but I'd like to see Jay have about eight, eight or nine before before moving on out. But look, you know, he's got a he's had two four rounders, so it's early days yet. You know, he's got he's got a lot of ability. He was a GB GB champion in the amateurs, so you know, if he if he develops how I think he can as a pro, I think he can be you know a British champion. And th looking at like Jay's amateur career as well, he done very well. But you know, you consider he was under Andrew Selby, who was like you know a world silver medalist. So that that kind of like stifled Jay's career Ain't in a way. Bitch. Yeah. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> Being under someone like Andrew was a fantastic talent. But um, yeah, it did stifle his, his development. But you know, yeah, I think he had to. I think he boxed at featherweight uh, the weights because. For some reason or another, he went up and he lost at that weight, but then he came back down and won the GBs. So I think that proved to him that he, he did belong at the lower weight. But um, as I say, you know, he's he's had two fights now, and he looked he looked pretty good in those two fights. And um, I'm hoping he progresses how I think he does. Happy days. Any anything else going on with Team Lockett? No, no, no. We we keep ourselves to ourselves, and we go about things in our quiet manner. We don't blast it on. Facebook and Twitter. I like, you know, I'm quite a private person, so um, you know, the only, I'm, on, I'm on Twitter myself. But the only things I seem to write on Twitter is about you know keeping people up to date when um, when the boys have got fights coming up and and letting people know how the boys are doing in the gym. So um, no, it's all going really well to be honest. Um, you know, good, but fantastic bunch of lads here. Everybody, everybody gets on really well. And um, yeah, it's just just really enjoying it at the moment. A lot more than what I, a lot less painful than when I was fighting for that way. So uh, my arms are a little bit worse for wear from all the pad work, especially when you're getting hit by guys like uh, by Enzo, Enzo Macronelli and guys like that. But uh, no, I'm really enjoying it. Happy days, all right. Well, we appreciate your time, and uh, well, we'll catch up with you again, you know, pretty soon as well. Cheers, pleasure.